At the end of dynamic mesh problem for a piston and reed valve part 1, I just finished defining all of the local dynamic mesh settings for the six dynamic mesh zones. Now I'll go into the global settings to ensure that I have the correct smoothing, layering, and remeshing settings specified. I want to use the diffusion method for smoothing. The diffusion parameter determines if the smoothing will be uniform throughout the zone or if the motion should be absorbed far away or close to the wall. A setting of two will preserve the cells close to the moving valve, and the cells far away from the moving valve will absorb the motion. If I specify zero, the smoothing will be uniform throughout the zone. I'll go with the diffusion parameter of one. For layering, I'll retain the default values, which say that cells will be collapsed when they are compressed to 20% of their initial length and split when they are stretched to 40% of their initial length. For the remeshing, I want the same values that I define locally. For this case, I don't actually need to define remeshing parameters both locally and globally, but it's necessary in some more complex cases, so it's always a good practice to define both. Note that I'm using the local cell remeshing technique, which marks interior cells in each remeshing zone and cells that exceed either the specified skewness or the size criteria are remeshed. I've also set the size remeshing interval to 1, so that cells are marked for remeshing every time step based on the size criteria that I specified. For the 6 off solver, I'm not including gravitational acceleration because I already defined it in the 6 off UDF. A final thing that I want to do is to specify some post-processing before I begin my simulation. And this is always a good practice when running a moving deforming mesh simulation like this one. I want to view animations of the solution once it's complete so I can review how the valve moves from closed to open to back to closed again. To accomplish this, I need to create animation definitions for the images I want animated. For this case, I'd like to review animations of the mesh and of the velocity profiles. First, to capture the mesh motion, I'll create a new animation definition. I'll name it Mesh, and I'll create a new mesh object and save it. Now I'll just select it and save. Next I'll create a scene of velocity contours and vectors to easily view the velocity magnitude. First I'll create the contour of velocity magnitude and save it. Next I'll create the velocity vectors and save. Now I'll display the scene and rearrange the color maps for how I want them in the animation and save. Now I'll create an animation definition for the scene called Velocity and save. Another good practice is to monitor the pressure on the surface of the valve, which I'll do using a surface integral report definition. Monitoring this quantity allows me to see if the solution is achieving acceptable convergence. Now I'm ready to run the simulation. I'll have it run for 250 time steps with a maximum of 30 iterations per time step. And now I can begin calculating. I'm switching from tabs to sub-windows so that I can see all of the related solution views as they develop. Skipping ahead in the simulation, you can see the velocity profiles beginning to develop in the region around the valve as the air starts to push it open. I'll end this tutorial with a quick review of the final mesh deformation and velocity profile animations. This concludes the basic steps you need to follow in order to properly define a moving and deforming mesh problem. Thanks for watching.